What does the future hold for Capo Caco and which New York Rangers could be in line for an in-season contract extension? Could it be Caco, Nick Bonino, Eric Gustafson, maybe somebody else? We debate this and more on today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 941 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off of your first purchase. So we're uh, one day closer here to being back to New York Ranger hockey. We had this kind of uh, anomaly in the schedule here where the Rangers are off Monday through Friday. Uh, They last played on Sunday, a dramatic win against the Blue Jackets. Going to be back in action against the Devils on Saturday. Very much looking forward to that matchup. But given that we've uh, got a little bit of uh, not downtime, because there's never downtime when it comes to the New York Rangers, but uh, facts are facts. The Rangers going five straight days without playing any games. I thought this might be kind of a good time to kind of just openly wonder, debate whether or not any players on the New York Rangers, specifically any impending RFAs or UFAs, could be looking at in-season extensions uh, from the New York Rangers. We've seen Chris Jury do this a number of times. Most notably, I think last year, Filipino, an impending RFA, he ends up getting a four-year deal worth $4.437 million a year from the Rangers. And then also... You know, smaller moves and guys that don't have as big of a role or, or certainly as much upside as Filipino, but you also had Jimmy Vesey signing for two years at 800K a season, and also Ben Harper, two years at 787K point. 787.5K. Let's go with that. that. That's the best way to say it. That's what he gets. Uh, those two are not blockbuster moves by any stretch, but it's jury kind of solidifying the bottom parts of his lineup. And obviously, a uh, vote of confidence in Philip Hedl, giving him that kind of an extension uh, in the middle of the season last year and not having to wait until the offseason to do it. So all this, it kind of got me thinking that clearly, you know, jury is somebody that, and the Ranger organization as a whole, open to the idea of in-season extensions uh, for their pending UFAs and their pending RFAs. And to do a quick roll call, we're going to go ahead and run through all eight of these players. The Rangers right now on the NHL roster, we're going to limit it to just the NHL roster, not worry so much about the players on the Wolfpack. But on the NHL roster, RFAs and UFAs, you're looking at uh, RFAs include Capo Caco, he has arbitration rights. Ryan Lindgren, he also has arbitration rights. Braden Schneider does not have arbitration rights. And then you've got UFAs uh, that include Blake Wheeler, Nick Bonino, Tyler Pitlick, Eric Gustafson, and Jonathan Quick. So we're going to go through all these players in no particular order. Talk about the likelihood of them receiving an in-season contract extension. And even if that doesn't happen, will the Rangers uh, end up re-signing them at some point? during this upcoming offseason. Just going to basically debate that and talk about, you know, which players have the best chance of sticking around and which ones, you know, could be on their way after the season. I should also mention, before we get into any of this, that the salary cap is going to jump, or it's expected to jump, from $83.5 million this year to around $88 million next season. So I'm taking that into account when I try to, you know, put the pieces together and, um, you know, put the roster together and see who can stick around for for what price and uh, still stay under the salary cap. So with all that said, let's go ahead. Again, we're not doing this in any particular order, but we are going to start with uh, the biggest fish in the pond, the guy that I think the Rangers have the most invested in, and that would be Capo Caco. You know, I was very bullish, and, and I wasn't the only one. A lot of you guys as well, and uh, certainly some NHL analysts to boot. Uh, Very bullish on Capo Caco coming into this season. Felt like it really could be his breakout year. He's somebody that has gotten better every single season, whether you, you know, would like him to be farther along or or not. Facts are facts. His numbers have gone up every year, and I think he's become a more assertive player. Last year, 18 goals, 22 assists, both career highs. A lot of us very excited coming into this season, especially considering that he was going to be on the top line to start the year. Uh, Obviously, has not gotten off to an ideal start uh, for Capo Caco. 14 games, just one goal, one assist. You you almost have to do a double take. Like, even though I know that that's the case, you know, I look at his stats and it's like, wait, are we sure about this? One goal and one assist. Yeah, that's all that Kako has so far. And once again, this despite the fact that he started the season and got a lot of rope 
on the top line with Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider. And to go ahead and basically get this out of the way, yes, we also have to acknowledge Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider have not lived up to their own lofty expectations when it comes to 5v5 play. The two of them certainly both need to be better. Uh, Mika right now has only one even strength goal and only two goals overall and only two even strength assists. And then you got Kreider, a little bit better, but still only three even strength goals for Kreider and three even strength assists. It's only fair to acknowledge that, you know, both of Kako's line mates for a good portion of the season weren't really doing a whole lot either. But now that we have that out of the way, uh, again, Kako got a chance with two high scoring, well established players that have both been on all star teams. And unfortunately, it just didn't work out. And then basically, out of necessity, they had to flip flop him and Blake Wheeler. Neither player off to exactly a torrid start, but the bottom line is sooner or later, you have to try something different to get these guys rolling. And that's where we stand right now. Uh, one positive for Kako, of course, is that he is still grading out very well defensively. And it's not just, you know, these charts that show up at the end of, of every game here. It's also, you know, just kind of doing the eye test. When you look at, um, you know, Capo Kako on the ice, he's doing a really nice job. I've noticed this a couple of times where, He'll stand up opposing players in the neutral zone. He did that uh, late in a game not too long ago when the Rangers were up by a goal. Uh, made a couple of plays at the Ranger blue line where, you know, they're trying to get into the offensive zone and Kako made a play on the puck. He is a good defensive player and he is capable of possessing the puck for long stretches of time in the offensive zone. Unfortunately, it's just not leading up uh, to any offense, at least not thus far. Uh, and again, despite him having just two points, he's actually a plus two. So it's one of those situations where, He's not doing anything to necessarily hurt the Rangers and unless you consider lack of offensive production to be you know, directly hurting the team, but he's not really doing anything to help them or hurt them is kind of what it is. He's just kind of there right now. And he has played well defensively. Um, I think that is obvious when he's still a plus two, despite the fact that he has only two points. Um, but yeah, Kako has to be a little bit better. And it brings us to our million dollar question here. Does Kako get an in-season contract extension? Does he get an off-season contract extension. Again, he is an RFA with arbitration rights. Uh, I don't see the Rangers signing Kako in season the way they did with Filipino last year. You know, it's a little bit of a delicate balance because, you know, during a recent episode, you know, I was in the chat and talking to you guys. Always good, you know, talking to you guys while these episodes are premiering. It's always a lot of fun. But one of you mentioned uh, the idea of trading Capo Kako, and it's something that, you know, could happen. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's impossible, but my stance on that, you know, anytime that a player is kind of going through a rough patch, a few years ago it was Filipino and everybody wanted to trade him. It's like, no, you, you don't want to trade him now because he's not playing well and therefore his value is going to be down. You're not going to be able to get a fair return for him. And the Rangers with Capo Caco is still making a very modest salary, I believe just north of $2 million. Their best option isn't to trade him and sell him for pennies on the dollar. It's to stick it out with him and hope that he gets it going and gets it rolling. Um, but you know, again, this, this is year five for Capo Caco and you do hope that sooner or later he picks it up here, but I think the Rangers, they will let this play out. I also want to throw out the question, you know, could this be Capo Caco's last season with the Rangers? Is it possible that after this season ends, the Rangers decide, you know what? We need that money elsewhere. We gave him five years. It's not working out. We got to move on. Yes. It's at least possible. Do I think that'll happen? No, I don't. I think, you know, Capo Caco will stick around. I think you'll see another kind of short-term extension for Capo Caco. He is still very young. I believe still just 22 or, or 23 at the oldest is Capo Caco. So the fact that he doesn't have gaudy offensive numbers in a very strange way that could work in the Rangers' favor this offseason because as far as what his next contract is going to be, he doesn't really have a leg to stand on if he's regressing offensively. So I could see another two-year deal right around the, the $2.1 million or so that he's currently making. I think that's possible. Is it possible also that the Rangers move on from Kako via a trade in the offseason? It is. Um, and that, you know, may maybe it's even a situation where they don't necessarily want to, but they're just getting tired of waiting and they want to use that money somewhere else. It's possible, but no, I, I think Capo Caco will stick around, but it's one of those situations where you're going to have to wait until the off season. I could see it dragging out a little bit too, kind of the way that it did with Alexi Lafreniere, uh, this, pa <clears throat> excuse me, this past off season. So another player I wanted to mention quickly here, uh, again, no particular order for, for the order that we're doing this in. Uh, Tyler Pitlick, he's a UFA at the end of the season. I think this is probably a situation where it's one and done with him and the Rangers. And we've talked about this before too, and it's nothing against Tyler Pitlick. It's just, I'm surveying the lay of the land here, looking at the Ranger depth chart and cap friendly and all that fun stuff. Tyler Pitlick, I'm not sure he makes it through this season with the Rangers. Uh, when you look at how they're using him, 
you know, six games only. He's mostly been a healthy scratch, and he's only getting in there because of injuries recently, only averaging 958 ice time per night, only one assist. Uh, and when the Rangers acquire a right winger at or near the deadline, which I do believe they will do because that's the area where they're, you know, quite thin, uh, that player could very easily end up taking Tyler Pitlick's roster spot. And it would be unfortunate, um, but that's just kind of the nature of the business. You've also got Brian Othman waiting in the wings. He could be in line for a call-up at some point. So Tyler Pitlick, I mean, the one thing that works in his favor as far as him maybe being back with the Rangers next year is that it won't cost much. And we mentioned earlier, you know, filling out the bottom parts of the roster with low-cost players. But, you know, they've already got Jimmy Vesey for that. That's basically why he's here, to be like the, the 12th forward or maybe the 13th forward in certain situations. But, yeah, Tyler Pitt, like, don't think he's going to be sticking around. But uh, I guess never say never. We'll see how it shakes out. Uh, definitely I'll keep everything rolling in just a second and turn our attention to Jonathan Quick, who has uh, basically set the clock back at least a solid five years so far this season. Going to talk about the prospects of him possibly sticking around uh, for more than just one season with the Rangers. We're also going to be talking about all the other free agents, you know, Eric Gustafson, Nick Bonino, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get to all that fun stuff in just a second. But first, I want to let everybody know, today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. You should not have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time, takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I was looking at a concert coming up actually next summer. It's quite a ways off, but Green Day and the Smashing Pumpkins going to be at City Field. I've never been to a concert at a baseball stadium, and one of the things that I love about Game Time is that it lets you see the views from your seat before you actually get there. It's like a virtual thing and you can see exactly, you know, what angle you're at and how close am I to the stage? And is anything blocking my view, anything along those lines? So I really appreciate that feature. I like to know what I'm in, what I'm in for before I, you know, get to the stadium and, and see the game or the concert, whatever it might be. Uh, but yeah, game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive, all in prices, show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without all the hidden fees. Buy tickets in two seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the game, the game Time app, create an account, use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so we're going to keep everything rolling here and uh, just kind of continue to go through all these Ranger and Penning free agents and talk about the prospects of them potentially sticking around uh, past this season and also, you know, maybe even getting an in-season extension as well. And for the everydayers, you guys will want to stick around for our Friday episode. Very excited about this. Going to be doing a crossover with Trey Matthews of Locked On New Jersey Devils. Obviously, it's a heavyweight matchup. You know, the two teams that could be at the top of this division at the end of the season. And uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm just ready for Ranger hockey. It's going to be a lot of fun breaking down the matchup with Trey Matthews. But for right now, yeah, Jonathan Quick. So when he was signed this offseason, I like the signing. I know it kind of got mixed reviews from Ranger fans. Everybody was losing their mind the preseason when he didn't play well. But even the most optimistic Ranger fan, I don't think could have seen him getting off to the start that he's off to so far this season. And not just winning, but winning in the absence of Igor Shesterkin and not just like surviving. We're like, okay, you know, he did well enough to win. No, he's been the driving force of some of these wins that the Rangers are getting when he's in net. But even when he was signed and I approved of the move, I, I thought that would probably be a one and done kind of a situation. He is 37 years old after all. Now, all of a sudden, all it takes is a couple of uh, strong performances, a couple of, you know, good games for the Rangers, a couple of nice saves here and there. And it feels like Jonathan Quick could actually stick with the Rangers beyond this season. And again, I realize he's getting up there a little bit, but he is off to a heck of a start this season. Comes down to a lot of different questions. You know, how much does he want to keep playing for the team that he grew up, grew up rooting for, that obviously being the Rangers? Uh, how much has Benoit Allaire helped him? Does he want to stick with Allaire beyond the season? If he chooses to continue playing, that's another question. Does he even want to play beyond this year? Or is he content to hang him up uh, when the season ends? Would Jonathan Quick want to be a starting goalie in the NHL again? He won't get that chance with the Rangers. And, you know, we're jumping the gun a little bit here. But if he continues to play near the level that he's at now, I mean, would a team maybe give him a chance or at least put him into a timeshare next season? It'd be hard to, like, 
see him as a workhorse at his advanced age, but I do think there's at least a possibility that he could be in a like a one and one a situation if that's what he wants uh, next season. Again, I don't know the answer to all these questions, but I do think there will be mutual interest, if I had to guess, between Quick and the Rangers in a reunion past this season. I think uh, in the case of Quick, this is something that could even happen in season. I get the feeling it won't happen all that soon if there is an in-season extension for Quick. I think the Rangers will want to see this play out, make sure that this isn't you know something of a fluke, make sure that Quick can kind of you know hold up throughout the entire season. He did suffer a minor injury not too long ago and make sure that you know it doesn't all come crumbling down because Quick at times over the past handful of seasons has really struggled. So I think the Rangers want to make sure that that doesn't happen before they you know offer him a contract extension. Uh, the one downside here also is that uh, doing this would also block Dylan Garan from potentially making his Ranger debut. But I'm not too worried about that either, just because Garan, uh, he's not going to be 22 until next June. And there's no like super rush to get him to the NHL. Now, do I think he could handle it at the start of next season? Probably. You know, he, things seem to be going well for him with the Wolfpack. But it doesn't have to happen. Igor Shesterkin didn't make his debut until he was 24 years old. Grand's only going to be 22 uh, at the start of the next season. So I think maybe it actually makes sense. You know, keep Jonathan Quick around on a one-year deal up next season. You know, his teammates have raved about what a great teammate he is and how passionate he is and, um, you know, brings people together in the locker room. So it's all good stuff. Uh, Jonathan Quick getting rave reviews so far uh, early in his New York Ranger tenure. And I think an extension could very well happen, uh, if not in season, then certainly after the season. Let's jump ahead to uh, Braden Schneider here. Again, very random order, but that's how we're doing it. Braden Schneider, uh, he's an RFA. And when you are an RFA, and this is especially true the first time, you don't really have a ton of leverage. And with Schneider, he's playing third pair minutes, uh, finishing up his ELC at 925K per season. I think you could be looking at an extension of, you know, a two-year deal around $2 million. That seems to be about the ballpark that the Rangers go to when it comes to their RFAs. And I think Schneider, that that's probably about fair for him. Again, you know, he's mostly been a solid player for the Rangers. Um, has he been as good as, say, like Ryan Lindgren? Because Lindgren a few years ago, and we'll talk about him a little bit later, but he got three years at $3 million a pop. I feel like Schneider, two at 2 million to it, you know, 2.2 million, somewhere in there. You know, that's about what Alexi Lafreniere, Capo Caco are getting. And I realize they play different positions, but I feel like that's about fair for Braden Schneider. As far as an in-season extension for Schneids, uh, it doesn't seem all that likely. I get the feeling they want to have a little bit of a longer look at him. This is just his, uh, his third season in the NHL. And we are less than two, you know, full calendar years away from his uh, NHL debut because when he debuted two years ago, it was in the middle of the season. And I believe it was somewhere in like January or February of that year. But bottom line is we haven't uh, gotten to that point yet. So uh, we'll see. I've always given Schneider a lot of props for being a chameleon. You know, he's played with so many different defense partners, uh, which to me would be challenging for any defenseman, not just a rookie like Brian Schneider, but, you know, guys of all different backgrounds and and ages and, and playing styles. And he's mostly done well with it. I know some Ranger fans have gotten on Schneider a little bit this season, but for the most part, I think he's done a nice job since being called up uh, for the Rangers. And something else working in Schneider's favor as far as, you know, the Rangers committing to him long-term or semi-long-term is that, yeah, the Raiders have really good defensemen on their NHL roster right now, but you look at the Wolfpack roster and there's nobody that seems to be like imminently ready to make that jump. One name that always comes to mind is Matthew Robertson. But Robertson, there hasn't been a lot of buzz about him lately. And, you know, we're seeing other guys over the past couple of years get promoted instead of him. And beyond Robertson, when you look at the other Wolfpack defensemen, it's a bunch of guys that the Rangers didn't draft. Some of them weren't drafted at all. Most of them are in their, like, mid-20s, even getting into, like, their late 20s and early 30s. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, Brainshire is an important piece of this team. And, you know, if, if he was to get away, you'd have a hole there on the third defense pairing for sure. So, uh, Braden Schneider, again, I don't think it'll happen in season. I think Rangers are kind of in wait and see mode with him, um, especially when you consider that he could be looking at a multi year extension. But I think Braden Schneider for sure sticks around. I, I think probably something gets done in the offseason. Let's go ahead and move on to a free agent signing of this past offseason, and that would be Nick Bonino. I feel like he has a pretty good chance, maybe as good of a chance of anybody, 
of getting another in-season extension. Kind of the same way that Jimmy VZ and Ben Harper did. Not superstar players, not guys that you're going to build your team around, but guys that can be had at, you know, very reasonable prices. I think Nick Bonino, right now he's making 800K a season. Maybe you go a little bit north of that. You offer him 825K, somewhere in that ballpark. Even doing that, he's only 50K over the league minimum. And I just look at Bonino's game. At, first of all, I think he's played very well this season. But beyond that, you know, Peter Laviolette, Chris Drury, they like players like this. Chris Drury has placed an emphasis on being strong at center. That's why you see, you know, Mika Zibanejad get the big extension that he got. That's why you see the Rangers go out and uh, get Vincent Trocek and give him a, a long uh, contract. And, you know, I know some Ranger fans kind of scoff at that, but Vincent Trocek's a really good player and uh, currently playing very well for the Rangers. And then, of course, Philip Hedl, they locked him up long-term as well. Nick Bonio, it's not going to cost nearly as much. I, I think, like I said, one year and 825K uh, could be about right. And it depends on Bonino. You know, is he enjoying his time in New York? Does he want to, you know, have a little bit of uh, long-term stability? Now, he is 35 years old, so you're always worried once you get up to around that age, you know, could this guy tail off a little bit? But the things Bonino does well aren't going to be affected too much by age, I don't think. You know, good penalty killing, uh, good face-off winning percentage, and just being a hard-nosed player. That stuff doesn't really go away with age, at least not that much. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's a good chance that Bonino um, could be offered an, a, an intern, an in-season extension by Chris Jury and by the Rangers. And, um, you know, again, I, I think this guy is, is an ideal fourth-line center. Remember around this time last year, we went with Ryan Carpenter, and nothing against him, but I think Nick Bonino is a significant improvement there. So, um. Yeah, that, that's where things stand, and I think Bonino possibly could stick with the Rangers beyond this season. Uh, we shall see. It's not going to cost that much, and I think that works in Bonino's favor. We're going to keep everything rolling in just a second here. I want to go ahead. Uh, another big one coming up in just a second, Ryan Lindgren. This one might absolutely implode Rangers Twitter. This this might be the battle to end all battles among Ranger fans about what to do with Ryan Lindgren after the season ends. So we'll get to that in a second. First, definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time than right now to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And something that my friend does, and I've talked about this before, but he's a big New York Giants fan. They're not doing so well right now. I'm sure we got some Giants fans listening to this as well that are probably a little bit frustrated with how this season has gone. But what my friend does, it's a strategy he's been using for years. He'll actually bet against the Giants, and in so doing, something good happens for him. Either his team wins the football game or he wins some money. So just an idea to toss out for you guys. But once again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. I uh, want to continue our conversation about all these impending Ranger UFAs and RFAs and a big one for the Rangers, impending RFA with arbitration rights, and that will be Ryan Lindgren, uh, just the heart and soul of the team. I've called him that before, and um, that, that's a nickname that, you know, I think a lot of people have been using lately. So uh, it's very true. You know, the Rangers, they do tend to fall apart a little bit when Ryan Lindgren isn't out there. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me right now, but uh, the Rangers' win-loss record just torpedoes when he's not in the lineup, uh, their goals per game allowed uh, shoots through the roof when he's not in the lineup. It's almost unbelievable. And I say this as somebody who Ryan Lindgren might be my favorite player on the team. He's certainly up there. Uh, even I'm in awe of, you know, what a difference he makes. And he does it by just being a hard nosed, old school, uh, rugged type of player. Uh, somebody that's going to go out there, play physical, mix it up. He's always in the middle of scrums. It, uh, you've really noticed that this year. I mean, it's always been pretty obvious, but this year, man, I swear, two-thirds of the Rangers scrums, you probably got Ryan Lindgren sticking his nose in there and either uh, initiating it or defending a teammate, whatever it might be. Uh, he does not shy away from that kind of stuff at all. And you need a couple guys uh, that are like that on your team, uh, that's for sure. Um, does an in-season extension happen for Ryan Lindgren? I'm going to say probably not. I think the Rangers... And for what it's worth, Ryan Lindgren was back at practice today and welcomed with open arms by a lot of his teammates, and hopefully he's out there against the Devils. But I feel like the Rangers, you know, given the fact that Lindgren has had some injuries, I think they're kind of in wait-and-see mode. Uh, that's probably even more true when you consider the fact that of all the Ranger UFAs and RFAs uh, for this upcoming offseason, 
probably Lindgren is going to get the most money out of any of them. The only one that I think you could maybe throw in there as a possibility is maybe Capo Caco, but I think Lindgren will probably get paid a little bit more than Caco. He's currently making more than Caco. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a tough call because he does play a style where it's not difficult to believe that he might not age as well as some other defense around the league, but here's kind of where I'm at with that. So he's 25 years old right now. I feel like the Rangers could probably get something done with Ryan Lindgren for four years at $4 million a pop. He's coming off a contract that for three years paid him $3 million a season. So let's go up a little bit four for four. If the Rangers were to do that, that would only take him through his age 29 season. Uh, he would be, I'm not sure when his birthday is off the top of my head. So he would either be 29 or maybe just hit the big 3-0 when that contract ends. It's not like he's ancient. It's not like you're extending him into his you know age 37 season or anything along those lines. You know, Ryan Lindgren is still a young player. And I don't think, you know, he's going to fall off that dramatically that fast. I don't, I don't think that'll happen at all. So, you know, again, I don't think it'll happen in season. I think the Rangers want to wait and see how it goes with his injuries, probably wait and see what the salary cap situation is going to be like at the end of the season. You know, it's one thing to re-sign somebody like uh, Jimmy Vesey last year or Nick Bonino this year when it's only going to be six figures and you know that they're going to be, you know, toward the the bottom of your roster in terms of, you know, both their role and as, as far as how much they're making. But to re-sign somebody like Ryan Lindgren, who's going to probably have an increase from his $3 million a season, yeah, that's uh, that's – you're, you're kind of swimming in the, in the deep end when, when it comes to that, because again, we don't know what the salary cap is going to be. And to do that without knowing what the cap will be, you're kind of uh, flying blind and you could end up costing yourself at some point. Something else that I think we got to keep in mind here. And I include myself in this. You know, everybody always looks when, when there's a new contract, I think Butch Navich is a good example, like, Oh, $5.8 million a season. Well, if you did a B and C, then you could have kept Butch Navich here. And it's like, yeah, that's true. But you got to remember whether it's Buchnevich back then, whether it's Ryan Lindgren right now, whoever you sign for whatever price it is, they don't have to just fit under the salary cap for this upcoming season. No, they have to fit under the salary cap for the duration of their contract. And, you know, after next season, Igor Shesterkin's a free agent. You're going to need some money to pay Igor Shesterkin. The season after that, Artemi Panarin, Jacob Truba, both free agents. Now, that that's a ways away, and a lot of things can happen between now and then, and we'll see if they're even back, you know, those two with the Rangers. That, again, it's, it's a ways off, but these are all things you have to consider. If you give you know somebody like Ryan Lindgren a fairly long-term deal, it's going to overlap with guys like Igor Shesterkin becoming a free agent, guys like Artemi Panarin becoming a free agent, Jacob Truba. So it's something to keep in mind, and I do think eventually something will get done. I think if you're the Rangers, you kind of bank on the salary cap rising, you know, this offseason for sure. And then hopefully next offseason for Igor Shesterkin. I mean, they, they have to keep Igor. They have to figure out a way to get that done. And I believe they will. Um, you know, by the time Panarin and Truba are free agents, do they want to sign them? Do they sign them for less? It, it's all, you know, very much up in the air right now. But I think if you sign Lindgren, and again, there's a lot of moving pieces, but I think four years at $4 million a pop, that's about right for both sides. I think Ryan Lindgren would probably be cool with that. I, I think the Rangers would probably love to have him back. You know, he is a hard-nosed, valuable member of this team. So uh, that's kind of where things stand with Ryan Lindgren. But as far as happening in the season, I don't think so. I think you'll see the Rangers cross that bridge when they get there in the offseason. Another defenseman, Eric Gustafson. So I made a prediction before the season started. Made a lot of predictions, and some of them look good, some of them not so good. But um, Gustafson, one of the predictions I made was that he would sign an in-season extension with the New York Rangers. I just felt like it was going to be a good fit. I could not have possibly envisioned what's happening right now where, you know, he's basically doing an Adam Fox impression in Fox's absence. And, uh, I mean, you talk about coming up big. That's that's the definition of it right there. And nobody's Adam Fox, but at least Gustafson is, you know, picking up the slack in Fox's absence. And, again, I'm still hopeful that an extension could happen. Maybe it, maybe it can, maybe it will. But as I said on a recent episode, the problem, and again, good problem to have, is that Eric Gustafson is playing so well right now that he might be pricing himself out of the Rangers' range because – if the Rangers bring back Gustafson, they're going to be doing it with him as, you know, a third-line pairing. Well, the way Gustafson's playing right now, and not just offensively, he's played well defensively too. The way he's playing right now, some team out there is looking at him as a top-four defenseman on their team, possibly even a top-pair defenseman, depending on, you know, the lay of the land on whatever team that that might be. But Eric Gustafson, I think, is going to have more value to another team than he's going to have to the, to the Rangers just because you know, the Rangers, they have good defensemen. And again, if they bring him back, it's as a third pair guy. They'd probably want to pay him as such. And other teams want to pay him more than that to give him a bigger role. And if you're Gustafson, man, you're bouncing around from team to team. He's played on like eight teams over the past 
five years, something ridiculous like that. Um, maybe he wants to finally sign a long-term extension somewhere and get paid more than he is right now. I mean, he's going to get paid more than he is now. He's only at 825K. So uh, again, I, I would love to see Augustus an extension happen. Do I think that it will happen? It's the odds are probably against it. If you're a Gustafson fan, my, my best advice right now is enjoy this while you can. And uh, hopefully he gets to be a part of something very, very special for the Rangers that obviously being a Stanley cup championship, because as we know from the 94 team, whether you have a big role or a small role on a championship winning team, as a member of the Rangers, you're basically a legend, whether it's, you know, Mark Messier back then, or, you know, Jay Wells, every one of those players from 94 is remembered finally by Ranger fans. So, uh, hopefully, you know, you win a championship and then uh, whoever you lose in free agency, it sings a little bit less at that point. The only other player that was left is uh, Blake Wheeler in pending UFA after the season. You know, he's starting to pick it up a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Uh, obviously, we, the aforementioned uh, flip-flopping between him and Capo Caco, Blake Wheeler now on the top line with Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider. Um, I think it's a similar situation where his only real chance of being back with the Rangers is if he does next year what he's doing right now and that is giving them a break uh for a very low cost right now he's at 800k per season and you know again he's starting to pick it up a little bit but it's been a little bit of a struggle for wheeler as well is this the end of the road for wheeler does he even want to keep playing after this season did he you know do this with the idea that okay i'm gonna chase a championship for one more year with a really good team and if it doesn't work out i'm gonna you know retire and go be with my family i don't know you know wheeler hasn't made his plans clear um and again, I think a lot of it just comes down to him being willing to play for not a whole lot of money. As far as right wingers go, I mean, there, there's nobody that I feel like is, you know, imminently going to be caught up for, for for by the Rangers, you know, to be put into this lineup with the one exception of Brandon Offman. Offman, of course, is a left winger by trade, can play right winger as well. Uh, when you look at, you know, other players, though, on the Wolf Pack, I mean, is there anybody at right wing that needs to come up next year. You know, Adam Sakura, I'm sure they've got big plans for him, but he's only 19 years old. And he's getting his first taste of pro hockey pretty much uh, this season right now as we speak. I mean, beyond that, you know, Riley Nash is here for two years. He's 34 years old. They don't have any plans for Riley Nash. Alex Belzeal, it's kind of the same thing. So, yeah, I mean, with all that said, I, I feel like it's possible that they could see Wheeler as a stopgap for next season too, but they're only going to do it a, if he picks it up a little bit, and B, if he's willing to, once again, give them a break, give them a discount, and come back for a contract that I would imagine can't go much higher than, you know, the high six figures. Maybe into the $1 million range just barely, but they're not going to go for it if it's any higher than that, I don't think. Um, but that'll pretty much uh, conclude today's episode. The only other thing I want to mention is that the Hartford Wolfpack got Steve Smith his first win a short time ago. They beat the Springfield Firebirds by a final score of 5-1. to one. The puck actually dropped at 11 a.m. here on Wednesday morning for that game. So big congratulations to Steve Smith, his first uh, career win as the head coach of the Wolfpack. And again, this is kind of a fun episode, just kind of survey the lay of the land and uh, basically do a way too early look at upcoming free agency for the New York Rangers. But it's never too early to think about these things and just kind of, you know, consider what this team might look like next season, who might be sticking around and who might be on their way. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, once again, thank you guys as always for tuning in to the Locked On New York Ranger podcast. If you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.